What's good, fam? Teacher Eddie back with another reaction. Sabaton. Uh, it's been a minute since I've done a Sabaton reaction, and we're doing Night Witches. Night Witches uh, is something very near and dear to my heart. My grandmother used to tell me about them all the time. Uh, she, uh, she had lived through World War II in the Soviet Union. And the Night Witches, unfortunately, is something that's a little lost to history. And that's why I love Sabaton. They cover some uh, obscure historic events. And the Night Witches are definitely women who need to be celebrated, who need to be remembered, who did a lot uh, during uh, the war, but unfortunately were tossed to the wayside like most women uh, after World War II. The Night Witches were women who had some of the biggest balls in all of history these are women who basically flew in wooden coffins and fucking crop dusters without parachutes without radar without guns without any sort of means of protection who had to fly at night in again 1920s crop dusters and who didn't even have the most basic uh instruments on board and had to use maps and pencils so they're flying in shitty planes they're they're given no support whatsoever at first and they still terrify the nazis so let's see sabaton let's get into it night witches and of course i'll be providing commentary as we go along So basically what the night was, so the night witches were named the night witches actually by the enemy, by the Nazis, who started creating all of these like insane theories about the night witches. Um, they thought that they were injected by some kind of like super serum that allowed them to like see at night. Like it's the fucking Chronicles of Riddick, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's Vin Diesel. Like, yeah, man, I can see in the dark. I am Groot. Um, th like they came up with all these things, but they called them the night witches because mostly they would attack at night, right? Because they needed at least some kind of cover. So uh, they would fly in the cover of night because again, they were given uh, not just the planes. So the night witches were formed uh, once uh, Germany invades the Soviet Union. So at first, Germany's kicking ass and taking names in the Soviet Union. And they're marching ahead and they're taking city after city after city. So Stalin starts to get, you know, a little anxious. Like, this ain't good, right? Uh, you know, uh, so the Soviet Union, even though Stalin is obviously a monster, right? Even though the Russians who watch my videos celebrate Stalin, it is what it is, right? It's my opinion. But Stalin actually enlists women into the military. Now, he was pushed to this by a woman named uh, Marina Raskova. And Marina Raskova was like the Russian equivalent of Amelia Earhart, right? So for those who are not familiar, there's, you know, a parallel you can draw. She had broken so many different speed records, uh, all types of records. Marina uh, Raskova unfortunately dies during the war. 
uh, either like in 1942 or 43. But she was the mastermind uh, who basically put everything together. And the Night Witches flew over 30,000 missions during the war. There was no other group that had won more medals during the war. They, they were the most highly decorated group for the entire war. But then they were treated like shit after the war, but I'll get into that later. But basically what they would do is they would try to figure out ways on how to capitalize upon uh, all the negatives, right? Because again, they didn't have radar. They didn't have weapons. They didn't even have parachutes. They didn't get parachutes until like almost the end of the war, like late 43, early 45. So they're flying in these crop dusters that are left over from the 1920s. So these were not even meant to be warplanes. They were made out of wood and covered with either like a tarp or some kind of cloth, right? So the other issue was uh, they would easily catch fire. They were very susceptible to short range fire as well. The benefit was they could take off and land fairly quickly as well as maneuver sharp turns in the sky. So what they would do is they would come in groups of three and they would have a lead plane and the lead plane was to basically draw the German spotlights towards that plane. The second and third planes, what they would do, uh, mainly the second plane would idle uh, uh, its engines, basically shut them off so they couldn't hear because the sound of the engine was described as like a really loud ass sewing machine, right? They were very loud. So they would fly below radar, they would, uh, they would idle their engines, and then they would drop their bombs. And that's where the Germans started calling them the night witches, right? Because they said all it was like they were flying on this wooden broom in the sky with no engines. So they started creating all these stories about them and the German, the Nazis were terrified of these women, terrified. And then the third plane would follow just in case to either draw fire or to return fire and cover the second plane. So like I said, these women had balls of steel to do what they did. Yeah, unfortunately, that that was that was one of the many issues, of course, that these women had to face was the planes were made out of wood and cloth, so they would easily catch fire um, around 30 or so of these women, uh, unfortunately, died during the war. Um, you know, and again, like I said, after the war, they were all treated like crap, uh, but, you know, they were you know, given medals and recognition during the war to kind of keep them going and keep doing what they were doing. Um, but yeah, they were very susceptible to uh, short range fire. But as far as long range fire goes, again, because they could maneuver so quickly. Uh, and again, they basically, like I said, traveled with nothing so they could gain at least some advantage as far as speed goes. Basically, that, that's all the defense they had were, were sidearms. 
which of course are going to do absolutely nothing. What a great video. Excellent video. Great song, great video. Swedish wonders, Sabaton is. I absolutely adore Sabaton. So, uh, so again, so after the war, uh, the Night Witches are immediately disbanded once the war is over. So they do not continue. And they're basically sent home. Like I said, like a lot of women, uh, not just in the Soviet Union, but, you know, throughout many different countries. Very few countries let women serve. Uh, so again, for being so, not backwards, but uh, backwards mentally, right? And the way that Stalin and his regime treated their own people. Because Stalin was not only responsible for the deaths of so many millions but so many millions of his own people through various treatment uh he was just basically tossing bodies on on the uh on the fronts uh these you know most of these young men were not trained uh one of them was actually my great grandfather jacob who my son is named after my grandmother's father he was like in his mid-20s no training whatsoever and dies on the front and, uh, of course, the gulags, uh, purges, uh, and, of course, the, the great, you know, famine during World War II. But he does let women serve, unlike America, for example. Uh, but America did, you know, employ and utilize women in factories and, you know, all these different things. But once the war is over, they're like, yo, get back to the kitchen, right? So not only did these women, uh, the night witches, have to deal with you know, even today being a woman in the military is not the easiest thing, but imagine in the 1940s in the Soviet Union, right? Uh, they were ridiculed by male officers and soldiers. Uh, they weren't even given like proper uniforms. They were given men's uniforms that were way too big for them. Uh, but they made it all work. They didn't care, man. And they ended up, like I said, being the most decorated unit of the Soviet Union throughout the entire war. They flew over 30,000 missions. These, these, there was only about like 300 of them. And after the war, they're disbanded, they're sent home and discarded. And then when they have the big victory parades in the Soviet Union, uh, where all the, you know, soldiers who survived are given recognition and awards and given, you know, the Medal of Lenin, whatever it is, the Night Witches, they weren't even invited. And they were just completely forgotten by most uh, after a while and just completely, you know, just written off. And it's just such a shame. So that's why I love doing videos, uh, not just on the popular subjects, you know, like the Civil War and World War II and all that stuff, but I love doing more obscure things, you know, like yesterday, I did a video about uh, the time that grave robbers tried to steal Abraham Lincoln's corpse, and then it was lost for basically 30 years. And a lot of people commented, like, I know a lot about history. I've never heard of this, even people who are fanatics of Lincoln. So that's why I love covering uh, topics like this. And again, let me know in the comment sections. Again, I would love to do more of these types of videos. Of course, I'm going to do the usual stuff like epic rap battles and oversimplified and everything else I do. But again, I'm a history teacher at heart and I love discussing these things and I love illuminating people's knowledge and expanding it on such topics and helping people learn things that they may have never heard about. And of course, celebrating people who need to be celebrated. But in either case, awesome video, original link 
uh, to the video. Sabaton is in the description. Please make sure you support Sabaton. Check out their channel if you haven't done so yet. Subscribe and all that stuff. And of course, check the links in the description for all of my links for my Discord server, uh, social media, and of course, ways to support me, such as Patreon. Need all the help I can get, fam, and I super appreciate it. Thank you so much for all your support. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I don't know what the hell you're waiting for. But either case, I've been Teacher Ready, and I'll catch you in the next video. Fam!